Welcome to Paw Paw's Workshop. Today's the final video on putting together the new car from CNC for newbies. Today we're doing the wiring. And once it's all done, we're going to take it for a test drive and make sure that everything works with using the universal G-code. I'm really excited, so let's get started. I'm going to start out putting the drag chain on temporarily and that screw and these two holes identify the exact location where the drag chain should be. So what I'm going to do is just very loosely put it on right now. I do not want to put it on permanently because I still have to run all the wires through it. But this will put it in place and keep it where it needs to be while I begin to work on the wiring. Now all the screws and nuts have been provided so that you do not need to have anything else to be able to assemble the drag chain and put it into position. The wires on the stepper motors have all been neatly rolled up and I want to be able to go ahead and unroll these and get it where I can use them. Now these wires, there will be four of them. There is a black and a green that make a pair and there is a red and a blue that make a pair. Now that's very important to be able to keep track of when you start to wire this whole machine together. You will also notice as I'm straightening the wires, with my left hand I'm holding it so it does not put any undue pressure onto the connection inside the stepper motor. I certainly would not want to break one of those wires inside the stepper motors. I went ahead and grabbed all of the remaining stepper motors and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and stretch the wires out so that I can begin working with them. I want to be able to install all of the stepper motors first and then continue with the wiring. CNC for newbies also included these connectors. Uh, in addition to that, they put the nuts and the screws in place. Now this will take care of the y-axis. Now one thing I want to point out, and this is especially for the new folks that haven't done this before, on the shaft of the stepper motor is a flat portion. That is very important. So when you put in this shaft into the lead screw connector, you want to make sure that the set screw is on the flat portion. That will help secure it. Now I want to show you a close up. This is where the stepper motor will attach and that's where the set screw screws in. Find this package and that has all of the screws and the set screws that you need. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the stepper motors in place. Now there are four screws that hold the stepper motor in place. Now from my perspective, I'm decided to be able to put this on where the wires are hanging straight down. This is your choice. If you want to be able to rotate it and put the wires where it comes out to the side, that's certainly fine. But for me, I decided to go ahead and place the wires in the down position. Next, I grab the little wire connector and this little plastic cover just lifts right off. And this will give you access to the screws to be able to attach the wires. And it also gives you the mounting screws. Now I'm going to go ahead and mount this to the rail and put it in position. Now it's your choice. You can position this pretty much anywhere along this rail that you wish. For me, I decided to go ahead and put it close to the stepper motors rather than in the center. My first thought was to put it in the center, but no, it's not really necessary. I have plenty of wire. So I went ahead and moved it over closer to the stepper motor and tightened it into position. The next thing I want to do is take that little small set screw and go ahead and put it in place to be able to secure the shaft to the lead screw. And just as a reminder, you want to make sure that when you're tightening this set screw, that is tightening down onto that flat portion of the shaft that's on the stepper motor. Don't forget that. 
Now I'm going to repeat this process for each of the stepper motors. I'm going to go ahead and attach them into position with the four screws. I'm going to use the little set screw and attach that shaft to the lead and I'm going to go ahead and put the wire connectors in place. Now I'm going to do all of this off camera because I certainly don't want to bore you with this process. Now it's time to start doing some wiring. I went ahead and grabbed all the cables and you can see that they are clearly marked. That is the Y1 and this one will go to the X axis. This one right here is for the Z axis and this cable is for the Y2. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of these in place next to where they go. I talked about this briefly a few moments ago, but this is the chart that shows where the wire colors are. The black, green, red, and the blue. One, two, three, and four. So it's important to be able to go ahead and connect these in accordance with that. The little clear plastic cover is actually numbered one, two, three, and four. So what I'm going to do is connect each of these pairs according to that. The black will be number one and the green will be number two and that creates the pair. The red and the blue wires connect in the slots for three and four and that is your second pair. Please do not mix these up. They need to be in this order. The stepper motors work in conjunction with these pairs. So that's why it's important to be able to keep the black and green together and to be able to keep the red and the blue wires together. Now I wanted to give a little bit of a close-up so that you could see the instructions more clearly. But you can see the pin numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 and you can see how the pairs are together. The black, green, red, and the blue. Now that I have the stepper motors connected, I want to double check to make sure that I have the right wiring harness and I'm going to go ahead and connect these leads to the screws and it's going to be in the same order, the black, green, the red, and the blue. Now one of the things that I want to be able to point out as we connect these wires, you're going to see on the cable that you have the black, the green, red, and then the other wire is actually white, but it does have the little pin on it that is blue. So if there's any confusion, just realize that that is going to be the blue wire, even though it's white. Now, it was good that they put the connector on there for the blue tip, just to be able to clarify it. So hopefully this will not confuse anybody as you're putting this wiring together. Just remember in this case, the white one with the blue tip is going to be the equivalent of the blue wire throughout this whole setup. After I have all of the wires connected, just as a precaution, I like to go back and double check and make sure that each of the screws are tight. I know this is a little bit redundancy, but that's the way I am. I don't want to take a chance on having a wire come loose at the inopportune time. With all the wiring complete on this, I'll go ahead and snap the clear plastic cover back into position and I'll move on to the other ones. The next thing that I want to be able to connect are the limit switches. Now these switches actually operate where there is a normally open or a normally closed, depending on how you connect it. And there's also a common lead. On these particular switches, the common lead is the one off by itself and then next to it it is labeled where it's normally open or normally closed. So I went ahead and connected this in position and now I'm going to go ahead and get the wiring set up to be able to run it through the uh, drag chain. I have three wires that need to go through this drag chain. I need the wire for the router, the wire for the stepper motor, and the last one is the wire from the limit switches. Now then, to be able to do that, this drag chain will open. Now what I like to be able to do is open a few of the tabs at a time and feed the wires through. And then as I get the wires into the drag chain, I'll go ahead and close these little connectors. That way it helps me to stay organized 
as I go through this process. So as I'm feeding the wires through this drag chain, you'll notice that I disconnected it from the other end. That way I can keep the drag chain relatively straight and work the wires through it. And again, as I place the wires into the drag chain, I'm just going to go ahead and close the doors behind it. Now that all the wires are completely through the drag chain, I can go ahead and secure this end of the drag chain in place. And this step, too, will be complete. To me, this is the easiest way to be able to run the wires through the drag chain. And it keeps you organized as you go through the whole process. I repeated this same exact process for the other drag chain. And running all the different wires through there. Now this time, I did not run the router wire through this drag chain. The router wire in this case, it's going to be too short to be able to make the complete path. So that one remained out. Okay, now that we've got everything wired up on the CNC side, now we gotta take all these wires and put them into the controller. And one of the things that I had done along the way is marked each of the wires so that I know where they go. Otherwise, you're gonna have a mess to sort it out. But each of the wires, as I unroll them, were marked exactly where they go. Keeping that marking was very important to be able to put this last step together. And putting these wires into the controller actually is very easy to do. This controller is laid out so that you know exactly where the wires go. So this will be for the Z-axis and then the Y2 and the Y1 and then the X axis. These little pins will just slip right out so that we can put these in. Once these are in, then we'll just be able to slip this right back into position. Now I'm gonna leave this one out for now because I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Z axis. So the first thing I wanna do is identify that this is the wire that I'm going to be using for the z-axis. Now the good thing about it, on the back of the controller, there's a nice size hole that gives plenty of room for all the wires to come into it. Now we're going to start with this z-axis and work straight down to the x-axis. Now this wire right here is for the grounding. All of the ground wires will come and be put right into this position. The other thing I wanted to point out, there's a lot of room on this side of the controller that the ground wires can come down through and also the wires for the limit switches because the limit switches get attached right here into this area. This is the X, the Y, and then the Z limit switch. Now again, I want to identify this as my Z-axis. Then I'm gonna slip this into the back of the unit. Okay, now that I've got all of these connected and I've tightened all of these screws, then I can go ahead and put this into place again. And there we go, that one's in place. Now these wires can get bent down nice and easy. This wire is gonna come down along the side. Now I took all four of the ground wires and twisted them together. And I'm coming up to just the one lead. Now I'm gonna solder the tip of this and then I'll put it into the ground. The ends of each of these wires were dipped into the little rubber coating. And all I'm gonna do is just clip off this one so I can just solder the tip of this to be able to slip it into the ground screw. Soldering the tip of this wire probably is not absolutely necessary, but it's something that I like to do. To me, it just makes it a little bit neater and it prevents any chance that the wires are gonna fray on the ends. 
This is a close-up of the completed setup where the limit switches are in, the ground wires are set up, all of these wires are connected and neatly arranged inside the controller. Here's a completed look at the wiring on the machine itself. Everything is all grouped together, tied together the way it needs to be to be able to secure everything in place. Now realize that the wires on the stepper motors could have been cut, but for me I really don't like cutting them. I also put a piece of tape across the back of this just to be able to hold that wire in place. Not that it really needed it, but I wanted to do it. Universal G-Code Sender is a Java-based program, and not knowing this, I needed to download this to my computer. And then I went ahead and downloaded the Universal G-Code Sender. Once I had that all in place, then it was time to be able to open up the Universal G-Code Sender and let's test out this machine. Now, I have never used the Universal G-Code Sender, but it's really pretty straightforward. I had to select a COM port and select the bond rate and of course the gerbils in place and then I could open that. The first thing you get is this alarm. The reason being is because of the homing sequence. If you click on the machine controls it gives them some settings and the dollar sign X eliminates the homing sequence and makes it where you can now run the machine. Over in this section is the job commands. So by clicking on the various directions, you can move the machine. The nice thing about this, you can work in inches or millimeters and you can key in any distance that you want to be able to move. Here I set it for two inches, so now I can go over here and click and move it two inches at a time. I really like this feature a lot. Using the Universal G-Code Sender seems to be a very easy program to work with and I'm excited to be able to try this out and learn it and share my experiences with you as I begin this journey. Well, the build is complete, the machine works, and it's time now to start learning this software and doing some projects. Hi everyone, thank you for watching my video today. If you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.